Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video I present my version of Block 2 of NASA's Space Launch System. Yes, it is with the Orion carrier planes because of course it is. And uh, so here we are, uh, it's sort of obvious. And it's so obvious that I thought I had already done it and I looked on the YouTube to see if I had already done it. I searched my own videos to figure out if I had done this already. As far as I can tell, I had put the S less core on top of a single Orion carrier plane to demonstrate that that was possible, but I had not seen the capacity of the S less system with two of them as boosters. And to some extent there's some overlap with a pre-existing system with the Ultimate Collaborative SLS because that one had nine Raptor engines on each of two boosters uh, and those boosters were Raptor 9 boosters or Unix boosters I also call them and they were just conventionally shaped. They were like uh, stouter Falcon 9 boosters uh, and they would return to launch site after reserving some propellant and so yeah I had done that and in that case with the ultimate collaborative SLS we also had the shuttle mice carrying the RS-25s and recovering them and in this case we are not doing that because we're just trying to see the capacity of this and we will see it does look good if we pop out here they are very very long in order to carry all of the propellant that they're supposed to and the reason why they carry so much propellant is because the engines are much more efficient than the SRBs of SLS normally would be. The engines, the Rex engines in this case, are somewhat morphed Raptor engines. They are less efficient. Uh, they ha uh, provide a little bit more thrust, but they're heavier. And the reason why we went with uh, heavier, less efficient engine is because we had the space and I wanted to simulate an engine that wasn't right at the cutting edge of abilities. Even though that does make sense for a recoverable engine, if you gotta bring them back anyway, you might as well make them the best you can. If they're really expensive engines, that only makes it more worthwhile to bring them back. But I did feel like maybe pushing the boundaries of chamber pressure uh, would hurt reusability, so I wanted something that was definitely quickly reusable. After all, these are planes, and nothing says quickly reusable than a plane <laughs> more than a plane so uh, we, we want them to be quickly reusable and we want the whole plane to be quickly reusable there are positives to this versus the return to launch site Falcon 9 model and uh, one is that well we don't have to reserve propellant necessarily as long as we have a downrange site that we can land at now do we not really uh, unless they can get to Bermuda uh, and I don't know in this situation whether they can get to Bermuda. Uh, we we could we have a lot of Atlantic Ocean to work with and not a whole lot of landing sites. So, yeah, uh, if we put on little jet engines, we could. I I had the methane jet engines that we could use if we reserved a little bit of the methane that they have in here. Uh, they could just use the jet engines to fly in to Bermuda if that's where we're going. But yeah then we would be needing to reserve fuel for the jet engines but overall uh, they don't necessarily need to reserve fuel let's put it that way but they do have a lot more structural mass with the wings and everything so it ultimately just sort of balances out but anyway without further ado let's see if it can carry 150 tons to orbit I don't know uh, it's not reading the EUS Delta V I'm not even sure whether we ought to have the EUS on here <laughs> um, for the uh, lower orbit capacity, but we have the EUS, so we'll see. Uh, it's just not showing up here at all for some reason that I don't understand. Okay, here we go. Looking a little bit awkward at pad 39B right now, but um, overall it's an interesting looking rocket. I do like any deviation from the normal sort of bundle of sticks thing. So here we go, ignition. And launch. It looks strong. It has it has a strong feel to it. I don't think we can quite fit four of these on it. Not that that would be a good idea, mind you. I think we need 90 degrees of roll. So this is largely just a capacity test, but we're interested to see where the carrier planes would end up. It 
they do have the benefit of also lasting longer than the solid rocket boosters. So that means that the core will be operating at a higher thrust weight ratio when they finally leave. So we'll have better thrust weight ratios overall and also not have to pitch up as much. But we are carrying a heavier load, so we have to think about that. Probably not a load that SLS would ever carry. It is meant for long-range missions, not to low Earth orbit. It's not really optimized for low Earth orbit, so at some point I should see what it can launch to the moon or something. We don't have to reserve too much fuel for control on the way down, but the sum needs to be reserved. I'm gonna switch off some engines first. Just a tiny bit compared to what would be necessary for return to launch site. Okay, that would more than do it. Alright, separation. And off they go. Um, yeah, I mean, I think we can not only put the payload, but the entire EUS into orbit. So, that would be a good thing. I mean, this is definitely not the LEO capacity. LEO capacity is going to end up being not just the 150 tons, but the entire EUS as well. Now, I don't know if the boosters are going to end up... Oh, I didn't want to do that. Um, they're they're uh, going to head here. I don't think that's far enough for Bermuda, but I don't exactly see the location of Bermuda. We I think it's a higher inclination, too. So, yeah. Now, if we had a trajectory up the eastern seaboard, that could work if we had a landing site in North Carolina or something don't even really have to operate... Oh, why are we not controlling from things? I, w I was just looking at other stuff and didn't notice that uh, things were not being controlled apparently. I guess the game was also focused on the Orion carrier plane. Or planes. But yeah, obviously if we have something... Uh, they can glide quite a bit, actually. They'll hit the atmosphere and bounce off initially. So it's more like around here-ish that they'll end up. So as long as we have landing sites about that far apart, it'd work. I mean, I guess I should dump the fairings now. Oh, no, I shouldn't have. Oh, sometimes procedural fairings. I have a very suspicious feeling about things. Hold on. No? Oh! Hmm? No. What? What do I have here? I think I've got the wrong tank. The EUS is not the EUS. Gosh darn it. Okay, well, we'll still get a benchmark. So. I think I accidentally put the ICPS hydrogen tank. That's because uh, I was looking at it here and we got a whole bunch of extra hydrogen. I was wondering why. I think I put the ICPS hydrogen tank instead of the EUS oxygen tank. That's just weird, but that, I think I've done that. So actually, it's not the EUS mass that we're carrying, which is fine. Like we'll, we'll see how much we carry. This will be a low Earth orbit test anyway, of the capacity. We're getting pretty close. Uh, I won't set the uh, stage to be able to deorbit. No, maybe I should. Okay, so we'll do it like that, separation. Yeah, I put the wrong tank. You can see, I mean, uh, it, it's sort of easy to mess up on. I mean, it fits. It, it, somehow the ICPS hydrogen tank sort of fits in place of the oxygen tank of EUS. Uh, they might be the same size deliberately, actually. Maybe that's just a manufacturing, ease of manufacturing thing. But, uh, yeah. 177 tons to low Earth orbit. Uh, we'd say 175 because it has to fire the stage a little bit to complete orbit. Uh, but I don't think it would take more than two tons to do that. So, yeah, 175 tons to low Earth orbit. Uh, perhaps we should see what we could fling over to the moon then and actually get the right EUS. Yeah, I mean, looking at them, 
I think it's the same tank. It's just that they've gone from using it for hydrogen and turned it into using it for oxygen, which of course makes it a lot heavier, right? With just hydrogen, uh, this thing, it's not really four tons, it's lying to us, but it's a lot less massive than the oxygen tank, so yeah, and we want those little thrusters. So we didn't test things properly properly, but we still got a number that actually works. Okay, well, let's just see with this. No wonder we weren't getting any delta V out of it. So, um, well, we can get 177 tons to low Earth orbit. And we want to be able to transfer this to the moon, so that means 3,100 meters per second of delta V. Let's say we just scale this down so that we end up the combined mass being 177, right? Do we get 3,100 is what I'm interested in. That would be nice if it was, yeah, pretty much. I think uh, we could call it 78 tons, uh, 78 tons to the moon. Maybe it's pushing it. Let's just go for 75 tons. Because we're going to have to complete orbit anyway. I want to launch in daylight, but it looks like the relative inclination to the moon is such that we would have to launch at night in order to line up with it. So we'll just assume that the US has enough delta V once we get there, assuming that it reads you know, more than 3,100. Uh, and we're just going to see if this can all manage it this time. After all, our thrust weight ratio has changed. It'll be less. Uh, well, maybe it won't be less, actually. Anyway, let's just give it a go and do it honestly. So, throttle up SAS on ignition. And launch. We actually lose a little bit of delta V because the RS-25s take longer to spool up than the Rex engines, the Raptor-like engines. Maybe I should light the boosters later, just like the real SLS has them light. I am tempted to use it just because of the way it looks, frankly. Flying in the face of convention, if you will. And personally, I always have trouble recovering the Falcon 9 style rockets, you know, the return to launch site, and I never even tried the drone ship landing. This, uh, fly flying them back is much more my style. Okay, showing some engines off. Taking a look at the orbital velocity, we do get a fair chunk. It's not too far off from 4,000. It's still less than 4,000, though. Okay, that's enough. Separation. This maybe. Oh, I, I separated the fairings at the same time. That was not my intention. Well, I guess it's at a low point on the thrust to weight ratio. I didn't really need these up, that up, but anyway. Okay, well, we're, we're all free now. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't really matter when we separate the fairings because this had enough uh, delta V to get the, its entirety to orbit. So, we're not really saving anything. We still have to end this stage short of orbit so that it deorbits. I don't know why we keep losing control here. But now we have the hydrogen and oxygen balanced. Makes me feel good. Okay, alright. That should still deorbit the core stage. Separation. That still explodes. That's just how it is. And let's get this to orbit. That is why the EUS thrust weight ratio is not a big deal if it just completes orbit here. 
Uh, even with block 1B, it doesn't need to worry about its thrust weight ratio much because it only does a tiny little burn to finish up. The only time it would need to worry about its thrust weight ratio is if it was carrying the max low earth orbit load, which hopefully SLS never does. I mean, it should be just sending stuff over to the moon or something. So let's call 174 tons to low earth orbit. Not necessarily the most efficient approach I took, but I mean, I don't think we have any choice anyway. Yeah, we could probably load it more considering the performance of the core, so yeah. Anyway, 3176 meters per second is definitely enough to get to the moon. Uh, we will just quickly demonstrate, but yes, uh, of course, we, like I said, are off-plane right now, but let's just say it was an off-plane transfer. Now this one seems like a particularly weird one right now, but you get the picture. 3122 gets sort of a weird not quite encounter with the moon, barely encounter with the moon, but we could refine it. I don't want to waste my time, but yes. Well, 75 tons to the moon potentially. And yeah, that might be worth it. I don't know about the other block two plans, but this suits me just fine. So anyway, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.